Well, I guess you all know it. Uh, you know, you can practice hard and you can practice well, but it doesn't uh, duplicate what a game's going to bring to you. I think the challenge this weekend is, you know, the dimensions of Ohio State's rink is, is much different than ours, and things are going to happen quick and fast. Uh, they played last weekend a couple games, so uh, we try to get the information to the players and understand what's coming at them, but, uh, you know, They'll get tested that first 8, 10, 12 minutes on some of the things we've talked about in practice. But uh, like I said, the energy level is high and the excitement's there, so uh, it should be fun to watch. Right. Mentioned Ohio State played a couple of games against the Minnesota Whitecaps, a professional team. At some point, would you like to play a, a team like that, maybe during the Christmas break, so that you can prepare for the games that really matter when the second half starts? I think any time, you know, prior to the season starting in September, if you get an exhibition game, and, and that's good, and certainly during the Christmas break, uh, it would be beneficial. The one thing with the Whitecaps is if you do play them, it counts a game against you. It's not actually an exhibition game. Uh, so, you know, when they formed the professional part of it, uh, that became part of the equation. So that's two games that Ohio State used up with their 34. So if your schedule only has 32 or 33 games, and it's an opportunity to play that. But, uh, you know, with the men playing the U.S. development team, it's better to play a game like that uh, than it is to have an open weekend, especially when you start a new half. <laughs> you mentioned OSU's ice rink. How do you prepare for the pinball that gets played in there. I mean, that's a small ice to an extreme and a lot of a lot of weird bounces, I I think. Yeah, and, uh, and so, you know, you try to practice some things that'll prepare your team, but uh, it's going to be those first three or four shifts for each group to go out there to get a feel of it, to get the feel of the pace of the game and get an understanding what the, what the ring dimensions and what, you know, situations that are going to be brought but uh, you know I, I think we'll be ready for the challenge I know uh, last year we went down there we had two tight games and so hopefully uh, you know we get the first couple of shifts out of the way and then uh, in most games if you take care of the puck and, and your power play is pretty good and your penalty kill is pretty good you know you have a pretty good chance of winning hockey games at least being in it so uh, those are the things we're looking for is to manage the puck uh, especially when we go down there. How would you evaluate your first half of the season, Mark? Uh, it was good uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you know, we had some obstacles and some challenges. Uh, you know, we played a good chunk of games at home. Uh, it gives our younger players an opportunity to get their feet wet. But uh, overall, there were a lot of good things that, uh, that we take away from them. The tough part is you're, you're breaking for a month or five weeks. And uh, that momentum that you had, especially in the last couple weekends, uh, you know, is forgot about it. And so now you have to start anew. But I think the nice thing about it is, you know, the veteran players, the players that have been around understand uh, the process. Uh, we've talked about, you know, it happens quickly now where there's only seven weeks. You have 14 games, uh, you know, eight of them on the road, six are at the home. And so, uh, you know, the first two weekends coming out of the shoot here are going to be very important. We've got two freshman forwards who already have double digits and goals. Was that something that you and your staff expected? I think the players expected to produce, but did you look at it that way and say, boy, if Britta does this or Sophia does this, or do you kind of stay away from those things, Mark? I generally, uh, I'm not a big stat guy, and so uh, I get more into, you know, how are they playing, you know, per shift and per period and per game. Uh, and I've seen certainly growth there. And, uh, you know, Britta Curl, who started, you know, on our fourth line at the beginning of the year, is now playing, you know, with, with Abby and, and Shirley and, and doing really well. And the more they've played together, the better they've gotten. Uh, they sort of have a, a chemistry, understand the game real well, and complement each other's play. Uh, and so putting numbers on them, I, I, you know, hopefully they're, they're going to get better and those numbers uh, increase as we go down the stretch here because we're going to certainly need them. I like to think about standings and championships, regular season championships, those kind of things, but these two weeks really seem like with you playing on the road against teams that you're going to be right in there with at the end of the season, maybe kind of deciding kind of games. Does, does that come up at all with the, when you talk to your players? 
I think uh, you know certainly this first weekend is just to try to continue some of the habits that we uh, you know we had going in the first half. You know, try to come out of the gate real quick here and establish some things. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Ohio State's you know a top ten team. They've had success. They play well in their building. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, depending on what happens this weekend and next weekend. If you're successful, it puts you in a real good position. If you're not, uh, you know, then you might be climbing the ladder a little bit. So, I think the, in the back of the players' mind, uh, they understand the magnitude. But more importantly, is uh, you know, the cliche of one at a time, and that's what you got to do. So we got to focus our attention on Friday night and get ourselves up to game speed as quickly as we can. Mark, the stats would indicate you're a good defensive team, but since you're not a stats guy, how would you evaluate your team's <laughs> defensive play? Well, I think a lot of coaches, you don't like to give up goals and, uh, you know, you look for reasons why goals are scored against you. But uh, I think, uh, as you know, as well as anybody, if, if you're going to be good at the end, you have to be able to defend and keep the puck out of your net and give yourself an opportunity uh, to have success with that. And so, you know, we'll spend time today in practice, uh, you know, talking about the little things within our own end. and. Uh, more importantly, as we get into tomorrow and Thursday, is you know try to play the right way. And that's what we'll be looking for Friday night.